How's it going, Illuminators? Do you have a riding lawnmower that has an engine that's running poorly and you think bad gas may be causing that engine to run poorly? Well, instead of spending a whole bunch of time and money to drain out the fuel and replace it with fresh fuel, today I'll be showing you how to diagnose and prove 100% that is the reason why your engine's running poorly in the first place. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So in the shop today, I have a John Deere L110 riding lawnmower. My customer called me and said that he was mid-cut, the engine started running very poorly, and then all of a sudden the engine just stopped running. He could turn the key and crank the engine over, but it would not restart. So with the hood off now, the first thing I usually do when a customer says their engine won't start is I remove the air box and air filter, and I spray a little bit of carb cleaner right into the area there, and then... I turn the engine over to see if I can get it running. So with the parking brake on, the choke on, we'll turn this thing over, see if we can get it to fire. So this thing did start, but it runs very poorly. However, there's not a lot of black smoke coming out of the muffler, which leads me to believe that this carburetor may not be flooding and it doesn't have a rich mixture. So now I'm gonna be looking at a couple other things that could be causing this engine to run poorly. One of the things that I always like to look at is my customer's fuel. So removing the cap here, going into the fuel tank, I can see a little bit of debris in the fuel tank there. However, the one thing that sticks out more than anything else is the smell that is emanating from this fuel tank. Now you guys don't have smell-o-vision, so you can't smell what I am smelling, but this stuff here smells like watered down fuel, almost like a rubbing alcohol. It doesn't smell like fuel at all. So once I suspect that it could be bad fuel causing the issue, I always reach out to my customer and ask them where they get their fuel and if they remember what fuel they used, and how old they believe that fuel is. In the case of this riding mower here, my customer said that he had a jerry can in the garage filled with fuel that was about a year old. Now here in Ontario, Canada, if that fuel was 87 octane, which is basically your regular fuel, it's going to have approximately 10% or more ethanol in it. Ethanol being a corn-based alcohol will attract moisture from the air. The ethanol then binds to the water and removes itself from that fuel. And all of that water settles to the bottom of the fuel tank. Now normally that would be an issue on a gravity fed system because water settles to the bottom. You know, on nine out of 10 mowers, you have the fuel line coming out of the bottom of the fuel tank, which would mean your engine would be getting 100% water. On this particular John Deere, there is a tube that goes into the fuel tank. So water shouldn't be an issue if the water was to settle all the way down at the bottom because the fuel tank does go down here. So it would be drawing fuel from the top. However, if the ethanol has separated from the fuel, that can cause an issue in and of itself. Now E85, which is 85% ethanol fuel here in Canada has approximately 100 points of octane. Now, octane is very good for high compression engines because the higher the octane level, the slower the fuel will ignite. However, keep in mind that if you had an 87 octane fuel with 10% ethanol, and let's just say for the purpose of this video that the ethanol content was 100 octane, then that would mean if you had water in your 87 octane fuel with 10% ethanol in it, and that ethanol separated from the fuel, you would be losing approximately 10 points of octane. So now you don't have 87 octane fuel, you have approximately 77 octane or less fuel. However, keep in mind that my customer also mentioned that this fuel was a year or more older and he just found the jerry can in his garage and decided to use that. So the fuel itself could have broken down over that period of time, further degrading how efficiently that fuel will burn. So I know the engine starts with a little help from the carb cleaner, and I know that it runs, which means we are getting spark, we are getting compression. 
So the purpose of today's video, as you saw in the title, is going to be how to diagnose bad fuel on a riding lawnmower. And the way to do that is by disconnecting the fuel line from the intake spot on the fuel pump. That way we can hook up our own fuel tank with our own fresh 91 ethanol free fuel as our test fuel and we are isolating the customer's fuel as a potential issue by eliminating it to see if the engine runs better. Now I do have a very small fuel tank here that has been bolted to a bracket. You guys have probably seen this on previous videos. I use it on my engine test stand, but the benefits of having something like this is you can hook up a fuel shutoff valve with a fuel filter that you can change at your own leisure. And it has a long enough fuel line that I can simply hook it up wherever I want. And then again, we're isolating the customer's fuel by running our own fresh fuel that I know works and doesn't give me any issues on my own equipment. And it doesn't have to be bolted up. You can prop that up pretty much anywhere. So I'll change those lines around and I'll get some fresh fuel into this small tank here. So lines have been changed around again as the fuel drips out from the previous line that I have clamped smells like rubbing alcohol guys it doesn't even smell like proper fuel so I'll bring you over to the carburetor and tell you what you can do next so if you suspect that you have bad fuel or water in your fuel there is or may be water in the bowl of your carburetor and the engine's going to be drawing that first regardless if you put fresh fuel into a tank because again, the fuel pump has to circulate it through the lines. And on this particular engine, you have a rubber to steel fuel line that then feeds another rubber line that then feeds the bowl of the carburetor there. So you could do one of two things. You could come down to the bowl nut, or in this case, it's the fuel shutoff solenoid, loosen that off just to drop the bowl ever so slightly to drain out any fluid that is in that bowl or because I know I can start and run this engine with a little help from the carb cleaner, spraying it into the air box there, I can start up the engine and let it run, even though it's running poorly, until the fuel pump circulates that fresh fuel into the carburetor and replaces all of that bad fuel or fuel water mix. So you could do one of two things. I will probably just crack that open a little bit to drain what I can. And to do that, I will be using a half inch wrench that we have custom ground on both sides to make it a little bit thinner. You guys can see it there. We just took that to the bench grinder and that allows it to go into the area in between the fuel shutoff solenoid and the bowl so that you can loosen that off. I'm not even going to put a jar under here. I'm just going to loosen that off and allow that to drip out. It's not a whole bunch, it is going to be a lot of water and alcohol content. It should evaporate quite fast. And you guys can see it's already stopped draining out. And once again, I'm getting a very strong stagnant water mixed with alcohol smell. So not what you would expect fuel to smell like. Okay, so I have the fuel solenoid hooked back up and I wish I could have done a time lapse of this, but check out how fast all of that evaporated except for certain areas where it almost appears to be the real fuel that used to be in there. So like all of this was like that alcohol broken down fuel. And then maybe this little bit here was still decent fuel because it's kind of like oily and solventy like a fuel would be. Same thing up here. There's some areas that haven't dried quickly and others that have leaving this white residue. That's a hundred percent ethanol breakdown. And that's the proof right there. So a little bit of fresh 91. You don't need a whole lot. I just need enough to test run this engine. One liter or less should be good. So I have the fuel tank filled up, maybe about halfway. The pickup's at the back here and I just kind of have this wedged in there for now. So that should be enough fuel in there. Once again, the bowl has been drained. However, the fuel line going back to the output of the fuel pump will still have that old fuel or water into it. Now the fuel pump on these machines are operated by crankcase pressure. So what we can do is disconnect the fuel line from here and route it into a can or right onto the floor if I wanted to. And then we can crank the engine over that will operate the fuel pump and will purge whatever is left in that line. So 
So what I can do now is go to the fuel shutoff valve on my test tank. Again, because this is not gravity fed, it's not just gonna be flooding out of the fuel line. We are going to have to crank the engine over in order to run some of that fresh fuel through the line. We're going to crank only until we see some fuel come out. That's it. So that's all fresh fuel coming out of that line. And we have purged all of the old nasty fuel out from that line. I also decided to replace that little bit of fuel line there because this end here was starting to get a little bit cut up. So the fuel valve on our fresh fuel has been turned on. All of the customer's fuel has been isolated or eliminated. The parking brake is on, the choke is on. I'll turn the key over, see if we can get this thing started. There you have it guys, a little bit of fresh fuel, engine runs good, customer's fuel hooked up, engine runs poorly. That is how you diagnose whether or not you have bad fuel. Now comes the hard part. If you guys will notice here, my customer pretty much has near a full tank of fuel in this thing and it's all bad. It all needs to come out. The issue with it being a top loader or it draws from the top is that I can't just draw the fuel from the fuel line because it will only draw again from the top, we won't get all of the fuel at the bottom. We're going to have to find a way to remove the fuel from the very bottom of the tank. So how do we do that? Well, you guys are in luck because I do have a video that I've already done previously showing you guys how to use a small rubber tube and one of these from your compressor in order to transfer fuel easily. And I can link that in the top right of your screen as well as in the description down below. You guys can just watch that video. It's fairly self-explanatory, but you basically just remove the cap, put the tube in to the bottom of the fuel tank, and then you poke a small hole into the line stick in your air tool and blow the air through the tube, which creates suction at the bottom of the tube, which will then draw the fluid up. And once the fluid starts moving, it will then drain the entire tank of fuel out pretty much all the way to nothing. Now, if you guys are going to be using a rubber hose to drain out your fuel tank, there are a couple tips that I can give you to kind of speed things along and make things a little more easier. I do have two hoses in front of me that are both a different diameter. This one's larger than this one here. And you guys can see that I do have a metal wire going through that hose there. There's gonna be a couple reasons for that. When you stick a tube inside of a fuel tank, you're gonna notice that this one is wound up and it wants to keep that curve. So if you're trying to put this into the bottom of the fuel tank, then it's gonna to wanna to stay curved instead of going in straight. So you can put a wire into the fuel line. It'll keep that tube straight as you go into the bottom of the fuel tank. However, if you have debris such as dead bugs or chunks of rubber or plastic from a broken down degraded fuel cap, then something like this might not be good enough to suck all of that debris out. So you may want to switch to a larger diameter line like that. The thing is, if you're using a larger diameter line, you are going to have to increase the suction at the other end, the jerry can in which you are putting the fuel into. That's going to be your transfer container. If you want to use the end of the tube inside of the fuel tank like a makeshift vacuum cleaner to suck up all the debris at the bottom of the tank then come over to the other end where you've poked the hole into the tube and hold down on your compressor tool to keep the air blowing that way and it will increase suction at the end that you have inside of your tank again making your own little makeshift vacuum and you can completely suck the fuel tank dry of not only fuel but also all of the debris. And lastly, one of the things that I like to do is use the Flow Tool Mr. Funnel. That is the funnel with the filter built into it that has the hydrophobic screen. So it does not allow water to go through the filter back into the container you're pouring your fuel into. Once I drain the fuel tank, debris and all the old fuel using the hose here, I take the jerry can or the glass jar of old fuel and I dump it into the Mr. Funnel and I put it back into the fuel tank and then I drain it again. And that helps get all of the little pieces that I previously missed with this hose because you have to remember that in order to use this as a vacuum, it has to be submerged under fuel in the fuel tank. 
If you do it that way, your fuel tank will be completely flushed out. Then you can add your fresh fuel in and that's it guys. You'll be up and running once again. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video. Like you saw there, you just have to have another fuel tank, swap it over, and if it runs smooth after you've had some fresh fuel put into it, then you know 100% that the fuel you had in your fuel tank is what caused the issues in the first place. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.